Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I have no idea what those women expected to do. They had seen the stone placed in front of the tomb. They knew it would bar their entrance. So what were they going to do? They had to check and correct the hasty preparations for Jesus' body that were made by Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. You know, you can't trust the men to do the ladies' work. But what were they going to do about the stone? We expect Easter to follow Good Friday as just a matter of course. But not for them. Not one of them expected a resurrection, despite the many times that Christ had proclaimed it. For example, he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And many more. He said to his disciples over and over that he would rise on the third day. And so that is precisely what the open and empty grave proclaims. Jesus lives. Christ is risen. <laughs> Very good. But no one believed. Not any of the disciples. And not even these women. They all were in deep sadness, with no hope, and only despairing. These women that came to anoint his body, they had stood near him at the cross. They had watched him as the body was taken down. The corpse was carried by those men and laid in state. Their hearts were torn apart by grief. I doubt they had even had a, sleepless, a sleep, sleepful night. Rather, the anxiety over the preparations for the beloved body of their teacher preoccupied them. And so while it's still night, the pain and sorrow weighs heavy on their soul. Even the first rays of sunlight on that Easter morning didn't pierce through their gloom. Truth be told, the only ones who got even close to the truth of Jesus rising from the dead are the enemies who, who fear the scandal of a disappearing or missing body and the fraud that they say Christ's followers then could perpetuate. That's why they appealed to Pilate to set the guard and to seal the stone. But the stone then becomes the first to proclaim Christ's greatest miracle. The seal is broken. The soldiers are scattered. The devastating Good Friday news, O oh, sorrow, dread, our God is dead, is followed on this Easter morning with the cry, the grave is empty, Jesus is risen. Look, the stone is rolled away. But not right away for these women. They saw the stone rolled away, and yet they still despaired. What does this mean? Maybe somebody tampered with the tomb, grave robbers, or worse. The stone and the empty tomb alone doesn't answer their question. Rather, it only begs more questions. Why? What has happened? Maybe they even knew that God somehow had done this, but maybe only so that they could finish Christ's burial. They did not expect that the first day of their week would begin with the risen Christ. They lacked the word of God. And this is how it always is with signs. Apart from the word of God, the sign means nothing or it means whatever you want it to mean. They had no idea what the stone meant. Without that word from God, they failed to comprehend how his work is always for their blessing. 
So as he does, when he gives a sign, he also gives an angelic messenger. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who is crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he told to you. Now they've got it. Now they have a word from the Lord, from his blessed angel, that their Lord Jesus, whom they saw crucified and dead, is risen and lives. On the way to the tomb, they imagined a dead Jesus behind the stone. But instead, they got an angel preaching the living Jesus who had rolled away the stone. Jesus had overcome death with life. Jesus had broken the bars of hell and death forever. And so the angel, for the sake of their brothers, who also are hiding away for fear behind locked doors, that angel sends these women to proclaim this amazing Easter truth to them. He has given them the greatest message of all. And their hearts, just like that of Simon Peter, are heavy with the guilt and shame of how they had abandoned and betrayed Jesus. But then they left in amazement and they told no one. These women and the disciples, they have hardened hearts. Hearts that have made, been made hard by their own guilt, by their shame, by their doubt, their despair, and their grief. Even the greatest news of all time takes its time in changing their heart. It does the same for us. We are, as the psalmist has us pray, the same. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger, nor any health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head. Like a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. I am feeble and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil of my heart. Psalm 38. The weight of sin is heavy on our heart. We still, even today, a year after we didn't have Easter, are weighed down with fear and dread of that which should not terrify us, but also of wrath and judgment, of death and hell. That heavy burden, it may be even keeps us from coming to hear Jesus. It may even get in the way, like a stone, from trusting in Jesus or coming to him. In reality, the Bible says that our hearts are the hard stone that prevent us to hear and make us unable to believe. All we know is that we're done for. We are closed in. We're in the grave. We can't escape it and we can't change it. But God alone can do it and he has done it. Our Father put the full weight of our sin, that heavy stone, on his own son. As Isaiah says, the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And of Jesus, John proclaimed, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He bore the full weight of all of our guilt and shame in his body. He was punished the wrath that we deserved. He was martyred by the cross of God. All the sin, everything that gets in the way of faith in Jesus, Jesus himself has put on his back. And he even laments under the cruel load, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's our sins that drove him to the cross, to death, and to the grave. That's what we heard on Good Friday. And it proclaims the whole burden of our sin, everything. All the shame, doubt, despair, 
anger, betrayal, it's all taken from us, and it lies on Jesus. Because your sins are on Jesus, every single one of them, even your very sinful nature, then it's no longer on you. You are the forgiven children of God. And what of Jesus? What of all that sin that separated him from God forever? What of the heavy stone? It's rolled away. Rolled away from the grave and rolled away from Jesus, by Jesus. The crucified one is the resurrected one. He is the lamb who is slain and, will li and lives and will never die again. And he's done the same for you, that heavy stone in your heart has also been rolled away. Which means your debt is canceled, your punishment is atoned for, and the one who did it all for you in your place gives it to you freely as a gift. Every stone that lays heavy on your heart and conscience has been rolled away into the depths of the sea. God has reconciled the whole sinful world to himself in Christ, who was given up for your sins and rose again for your justification. That's a cause worth celebrating. It's a cause worth putting on our lips. It's amazing. There's no need to be at fear. The stone is rolled away. Your sin is rolled away. It is death has been rolled away. All wrath and judgment rolled away. Hell's gate rolled away. You have full and complete access to God through Christ and his own body through his death and resurrection. The temple curtain is torn in two. The Holy of Holies is yours. Because out of that open tomb came a joyful proclamation. Christ is risen. His righteousness, his life, and his salvation are yours. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. In the name of Jesus. Amen.